today we will start with input impedance now this input impedance is a very important characteristics of the uh, what you can say uh, the rf engineer and mainly for the antenna now this input impedance uh, uh, thing that is uh, why it is important because the rf engineer the most important thing is the power should transmit to the load that is to the antenna and for transmitting that uh, your impedance should be max that is the maximum power transfer theorem okay so that also we will discuss rf engineer generally or the antenna design uh, the engineer involved in that put almost 50% of their energy in this uh, input impedance and input input impedance matching there is a separate section in the uh, microwave impedance matching and all these things and this is the antenna subject we will not uh, uh, focus on more more on the impedance matching uh, but here we will understand what is the uh, input impedance and uh, how this input impedance is related <coughs> now this input impedance is what it is the measure of how good antenna act as a uh, transducer between the propagation medium and the connecting uh, guided media or the transmission line so we know that the antenna is acting as a what <coughs> transducer that is it is converting if you are saying the transmitting antenna so it is converting transmitting uh, uh, what you can say it is converting the transmitting uh, signal that is electrical signal to the what uh, electromagnetic signal if it is receiving then vice versa that electromagnetic signal is converted to the electrical signal okay so this way this antenna function is there so input impedance is what that is how good antenna acts as a transducer how efficiently or how good it is converting the electrical signal to electromagnetic and electromagnetic to the electrical this is what the thing here so antenna acts as a load impedance to the uh, transmission line so for the transmission line the antenna acts as a load this is what the designing philosophy uh, when the uh, we are designing the transmitting or receiving section of the antenna it is defined as the impedance uh, uh, present by the antenna at its terminal okay so this is what the input is or the ratio of voltage to current at the pair of the terminal so that the same or the ratio of the appropriate component of the electric to the magnetic this is also the additional thing okay so this also electric to magnetic field that ratio is also considered for the input impedance now uh, this is what the two example i have taken this is what the transmitter and this is what the transmitting antenna now this transmitter is what having this is what uh, the transmitting uh, signal that is what the v and zg that is what the generator or the transmitter impedance and this is what the input current you are giving and this is what you are transmitting antenna so this transmitting antenna is acting as a load okay and this is za transmitting antenna is having the impedance of za and this is acting as a load so this is what the transmitter is the source and here it is acting as a load this is what the analogy we are using for a transmitting antenna for receiving antenna the analogy is vice versa different reverse so uh, here receiving antenna is acting as a source because the electromagnetic uh, waves induced in the uh, antenna is induce the voltage so voltage is induced so it is acting as a source again the antenna impedance is zd and you are transmitting it to the zd so this is whatever here receiver is considered as a load and in the transmitting antenna antenna is considered as a load so z a that is impedance of antenna and here for the receiver zl is the impedance of the receiver so two cases the analogy is uh, reverse so here we can understand the same thing i uh, put it here uh, this is what the uh, the uh, transmitting and the receiving antenna how it appear uh, as a load or as a um, source so in this case transmitter 
is a source transmitting antenna a receiver antenna is as a source okay so this zn is divided into two part ra plus jxn that is the uh, impedance is bifurcated into two part that is the resistance and the reactance x part is the reactance okay now for the understanding and analysis purpose of this antenna okay so uh, the uh, reactive part uh, this is what reactive part uh, represent energy stored in the field near the antenna so this reactive part represent what the field stored in the antenna whereas the resistive part represent the power loss in the antenna okay so energy stored by the reactive part and resistive part the power loss uh, so uh, as uh, whatever the resistance of the antenna if it is as low as possible then it is power okay power is radiated always from the antenna and power is uh, power is lost into heat in the antenna that is what the antenna circuit and in the medium surrounding the antenna so heat in terms of if there is a resistance so there is a heat dissipation okay that is what the basic concept we are using here basic things then the generator has its own internal impedance so this generator we are seeing now we are focusing on the transmitting side so zg is equal to rg plus j xg again this bifurcation and the current that is what the current at the antenna input terminal will be so the current is v simple v by r or v by impedance so v uh, you can apply simple dohm's law here so v by zg upon zd that is what the voltage upon uh, the these two impedances are generator impedance and antenna impedance which allow us to determine so this is what analysis part we are uh, going in a little bit step by step so what the total power is denoted by p total produced by the generator and the power pt delivered to the antenna now here you just have to uh, understand the difference between these two power okay what is this two power this is what p total p total is the power which is uh, p total what this is what the power generated p total is power produced by the generator and pt what this pt it is what pt is what the power delivered to the antenna so these two different power side then the power pg generator power okay loss in the generator that is internal resistance rg so due to the internal resistance rg whatever the power loss that is rg now by this terminology we are trying to understand further now here the total power produced by the generator that is p total p total is the total power produced by the generator okay and the power delivered to the antenna is pt just now what the terminology we have seen and the power loss in the generators internal resistance is what rg and pg uh, uh, rg uh, that is what pg so it is uh, uh, you can say that uh, p total equals to pt plus pg that is pg is the loss in the generator and p total is the power delivered to the antenna so the appropriate uh, the, the portion of uh, power that is pt delivered to the antenna is red, radiated away okay says the amount p radiated now from the p to the pt all the power is not radiated some power is radiated that will say the p rad okay and the rest dissipated as a ohmic loss that is p ohm so again this p t is divided into radiated power and ohmic loss so what again i'll repeat repeat so here you will have this uh, 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 power okay so what power you have here p total p total into bifurcate into two part one part is and uh, power delivered to the antenna that is pt and gt is loss in the generator okay now again this p total is again bifurcated 
that is the radiated power and ohmic loss in the angle. So this way we can simply write this equation. Uh, this is the simple what uh, the power equations we are writing. The same thing, nothing great in this. So this P total is one by two real part of V into I. So one by two uh, real part of uh, V square. And then uh, 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 I you can write that is R G plus R A upon uh, Z G plus Z A square. Okay. So this way you can rewrite this. So now your P T. This is P total. Now P T is one by two I in square into R A. So whatever the R A is, the uh, you can have the antenna resistance. Now one by two V square R A upon again you can rewrite this Z G plus Z A square. So P G that is what the power dissipated in the generator is written by this formula. Okay, so this is what the simple simple uh, power formulas. What uh, the basics we know. So thus, P T equals to P radiated plus P O. Okay, now uh, so P T we can write. Now our focus is in P T. So these two part uh, can be represented, and uh, what uh, conveniently. Equivalent resistance by writing R A. That is a R A equals to radi uh, antenna resistance is radiation resistance and the ohmic loss. So R radiate uh, plus R ohmic. So here uh, R radiate is referred to as the radiation resistance. Now this P T you can rewrite that is by further radiation power radiated power plus ohmic power. That is the same. So the total maximum the amount of the power P T delivered to the antenna and the minimum the power loss in the generator that is the internal resistance. So the total impedance must satisfy the usual uh, match. What is the match condition? So here uh, this P T is again here and this is what the efficiency of antenna. So efficiency of antenna is what. Uh, P radiated upon P total. If P whatever the P total, um, whatever the P T, okay, the power given to the antenna is completely radiated, so your efficiency is one. That means hundred percent. But it depends on what radiation P radiated. So uh, R radiated upon current is same. So it is the simply ratio of R radiated upon R A. That is R A can be R radiated plus R O. So, if you are ideally, if your ohmic loss in the antenna is zero, then you can, your antenna can have a hundred percent efficiency. But practically, there is no material available which is having the zero ohmic uh, loss or the zero uh, resistance. It will be little bit some one ohm, two ohm, three ohm, whatever it is. Some resistance will be there. So, no antenna is practically possible till date with hundred percent efficiency. Okay, so this is what uh, the uh, equation prove here. Now the maximum power transfer theorem. What I am saying here, this is Z A uh, must be equals to the complex conjugate of the Z G. So this is what the uh, impedance of the antenna, and this is generator impedance. If these are the complex conjugate of each other, means what the resistance part is equal R A equals to R G. This is what the resistance part and reactance part is the negative. That is, uh, reactance of antenna must be the negative of the reactance of the generator. So, if it is inductive, it must be 100% capacitive. Okay. So, this is, this is called the complex conjugate. You know the maximum power transfer theorem. We are studying in your uh, basic electrical engineering. Okay. So, this is by, uh, by uh, relating these things. Uh, what the PT max for the impedance match condition and the hundred percent impedance match condition? What what uh, we can say uh, we can say here that uh, the one by two uh, P total, okay, one by two P total. So this is V square by uh, eight times uh, RG. So this is what the maximum power can be uh, PT, okay, PT max. So this 
is what we are calculating. Now, if the generator and the antenna are mismatched, then obviously the power will not deliver to the antenna. So when uh, we can write in terms of the RMS value of the source, then V RMS equals to V by root two basic formula. Uh, PT max equals to V square, that is V RMS upon four RG. Uh, the case of the receiving antenna is similar. So same thing you can write for the receiving antenna, only terminology will get changed. So this is for the receiving antenna maximum power and the impedance. Same thing is for the receiving antenna. Okay. So this is what about the impedance. So these are the basic things. Now we will go for the antenna aperture. Now what is antenna aperture? So antenna aperture, uh, one is the physical dimension of the antenna. And another is what the aperture, that is what the effective aperture. So mainly we are talking about the effective aperture. So what is the aperture? Suppose this is what my antenna of this shape. So this is what whatever the area of this you can calculate. If this is the antenna, so you can calculate the area of this. So this is what simply the aperture. But effective aperture that when, suppose this is the receiving antenna, when the wave incident on this, whatever the wave incident on this, whether uh, all the portion of the antenna is acting as a receiver, if it is a receiving antenna. Or uh, at the edge, suppose it, you know, the wave incident and it may scatter. So it is of no use. It will not consider under the aperture area of the antenna. So this is what the basic understanding. Now we will uh, discuss. Now here, two examples are given. This is what a dish antenna and this is what the linear wire antenna that may be the dipole antenna. So electric field pointing vector I uh, mentioned here multiple times. The electric field is perpendicular to the magnetic field and direction of propagation. All these three are perpendicular to each other. So this is electric field, this is magnetic field and this is what the direction of propagation. So uh, the uh, uh, the waves, electromagnetic wave incident on this disk as well as here. So, uh, what describe a receiving property of antenna? What this effective aperture mainly we are considering. Now, some property we are considering for it is easy to understand for transmitting antenna uh, as impedance we are taken from the transmitting antenna. Some properties is easy to understand from the receiving antenna. So accordingly, we do this, but it is same for both receiving and transmitting. So when, what it describes, describe the receiving property of antenna, how good it is in the receiving the electromagnetic uh, wave, okay, mainly. So when an antenna is uh, operating at the receiving antenna, it extracts and create uh, amount of power from the incident electromagnetic wave, as I told there. The incident electric field set up a current on the antenna. Such uh, current may be uh, what um, uh, uh, the by the Thevenin's equivalent circuit, as we discussed, and can be uh, converted in the receiving and the load impedance. The uh, induced current also re radiate uh, an electromagnetic field that is the reflected to as the scattered field, it will reflect somewhere in which interfere with the incident field. Okay, whatever the incident field, it will uh, 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 what interfere with that and it will disturb the receiving of the antenna. So, PR that is aperture into P incident, whatever the effective aperture here, it is the effective aperture, it is taken in terms of. Uh, whatever the things are there. So, P incident is the incident power. So, maximum gain is 4 pi A uh, upon lambda square. A here is the aperture, effective aperture. Now, the antenna effective aperture, the total electric field outside the antenna will be the sum of incident and the radiated field. Okay. So, the total electric field outside the antenna will be sum of incident and radiated field. Okay. So the effective area of the effective aperture of the antenna is defined to be that area which when 
is uh, intercepted by the incident power density that is p incident gives the amount of receiving power that is pr available at the antenna output terminal so p radiated uh, is equals to am into p incident okay then the uh, effective area is not equal to the physical area of antenna as i told previously the effective area is lesser than the physical area so how much lesser so that is mentioned here in the next statement that is for a dish or a horn I'm sorry for a dish or a horn antenna the effective area of a typical uh, that is the physical area that is 55% for the 55 to 65% for a dish and 60 to 80% for the horn so horn antenna is considered as the <coughs> best effective aperture area, having the effective aperture area of 60 to 80%. And dish antenna is also considered a good, so it is 55 to 60. All other is lesser than this. Okay, so you can just uh, imagine that how much scattering is there and how much re radiation is there. So this is what the effective aperture. So this is used what it is mainly used to describe the power capture characteristics of the antenna when the wave is uh, on the receiving antenna it is incident so effective area how you can define the ratio of available power at the terminal of the receiving antenna to the power flux density of a plane wave incident on the antenna from that direction the wave being polarized match to the antenna if not specified direction of the maximum radiation intensity is implied so this is what the effective area okay scattering area that is what the other the equivalent area which uh, multiplied by the incident power density is equal to the scattering or radiated power so effective area is uh, uh, total physical area, you can say the effective area plus the scattering area. So our focus is in the effective area of the antenna. That is effective area or the aperture, both are the same thing. Effective area, generally in the technical term, we use the uh, terminology aperture and uh, in layman or general, you can say the effective area of antenna. Okay, same. This is loss area and capture area. So capture area where you are capturing, loss area where you are losing. So it is denoted by R. Then uh, capture area is what effective area plus scattering area plus loss area. So this is what the capture area, effective area, scattering area plus loss area. This way the effective aperture is there. And now quickly we will go for the reciprocity theorem. Uh, this theorem in a um, uh, what you can say electrical network you have studied. So I will go uh, briefly in the reciprocity theorem. What is it? So if an EMF is applied to the terminal of an <coughs> antenna A and the current measure at the terminal of another antenna it is B, then an equal current in both amplitude and phase will be observed at the terminal of antenna A if the same EMF is applied to the terminal of the antenna B. So reciprocity is the reverse uh, forward and reverse uh, condition of any network. So that is we are applying for the antenna. So concept is same. <coughs> so this is what this is antenna transmitting. If this uh, antenna is transmitting, this is receiving. So whatever the equivalent circuit is this, and if this antenna is transmitting, this is receiving, so what will be the reception? So both the things, whatever intentionally this antenna is made this way, so that there should be some change in the condition. So if both are same as kept vertically uh, straight in front of each other, so to make the changes, so that's why. So if energy flow, this is transmitting and this is receiving, or vice versa, this is transmitting and receiving. 
if it induces in the receiving antenna induces the same current so then this is called the reciprocity theory so here this is the proof so simply you can go through this and uh, you can understand the reciprocity theory now we will go for the antenna radiation field now uh, already we have discussed this so quickly i will go for the antenna radiation field so uh, it is divided into three part so the radiation field from the transmitting antenna is uh, that is characterized characterized by the pointing theorem and this pointing theorem that is what electric field vector is perpendicular to the magnetic field vector is perpendicular to the uh, uh, what you can say uh, direction of propagation okay so this is what the change here now this is what the effective area in meter so power delivered at the load and the power delivered at the incident wave that is in watt per meter square and total registration resistance that is rr plus rn so this is what the effective aperture area is given by this formula so this is what the calculation is okay so so antenna radiation fields that can be bifurcated into this uh, category so uh, very first is the radiative field then second is the radiative field is divided into two part that is radiating near field uh, sorry one is the reactive field then radiating near field and radiating far field so most of the applications are in the radiating far field radiating near field very few application as we discussed previously that is uh, the rfid tag may be used and reactive field generally uh, this is for the analysis this field is used okay so uh, the dimensions are given based on this so for the near field it is uh, given by this formula and by this so the, already we had discussed this previous so this is what uh, the things here and uh, we will just uh, stop here if you will have any question so let me know so i can uh, resolve your uh, questions if you will have any queries